Hey guys, uh, Sean from AutoLeatherDye.com here and what we're going to do today is we're just going to do a basic recoloring video. Uh, as you can see here, the area we're working on, this is a wear spot. Uh, this bolster here, this side panel where we come in and out of the car, it of course gets a lot of friction. Uh, and if you're short like I am, you know, you actually got to crawl over in this thing and work your way down. So these areas on the both side bolsters are very common, the back bolsters as well. Uh, but anyway, so we're just gonna we're gonna recolor this area, show you how easy the product is to use, how well it works, and uh, just kind of give you an idea of what we're dealing with. So we're gonna use a couple things today. One we're gonna use is Dynamic Clean. Uh, this is our prepping material. This is included in all of our dye kits as well as our dye bundle. Uh, it works really well for removing any old cleaners, conditioners, protectors, light body oils, things like that. Anything that would be an adhesion deterrent to the dye. Uh, second thing, of course, we're going to use is our luxury leather repair automotive leather dye. And what we've done is we've pre-mixed the color. This is a light, this is a GM light titanium color in a GMC Acadia. Of course, we have a dye for that, so we we just pre-mixed our color there, and we're going to start the process. Just show you just how easy this is. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our dynamic clean and we're just going to lightly spray the area. You'll notice how when I spray the leather this area got darker. The reason that is is because the coating has essentially opened up. So the you know of course the cow's not gray when it's out standing out in the middle of the field. All of this is is just a coating that's applied to the surface. So by showing that's getting dark it's just showing that the coating is gone and that the the liquid is actually absorbing down into the leather hide itself. So we're just going to come in real light pressure and we're just going to lightly clean with our scuff pad. Going to use our autoleatherdye.com microfiber towel. You get one of these in every kit as well as a free gift from us to you. These things work really well for maintenance as well as, uh, you know, applying conditioner, protector, things like that. So once we've got it good and clean, you'll notice that... Yeah, it's, it's looking real good. It's feeling soft. The only issue is, is obviously this little color where it's an eyesore. So now we're going to come in and actually do the dye process. So what I've done is I have, I'm going to pull the camera up here. I have taken the dye and I have shaken it really well in my bottle. I have poured it into a separate container. It's a little bowl. Um, and the only reason I'm doing that is just because it's going to make dipping the sponge into the dye it's going to make getting it on the sponge real easy so we're just going to sit there right there in the middle of the seat and hope we don't spill it but if we do well then we'll just dye the rest of the seat so it'll already be dyed for us so anyway the a few key things before you get started in this obviously prepping is really important make sure you're prepping clean you know you don't want any dirt grime light body oils things like that on the leather they will cause adhesion deterrence the second thing is when you apply the dye, it is very important to put this dye on in light coats. It is better to have three to five heavy or very light coats than it is to have one to two really thick coats. And that's just going to be because the dye needs to remain flexible. Um, this leather, as it gives and takes, as you put get in and get out, you want that dye to, to come together as well as come back. Um, so that is very, very important as far as putting the dye on. Just put it on real lightly. The other thing, really we're just doing, we're focusing on this spot here. This is our, this is our problem child, problem spot. Uh, but what we're going to do is to help this thing blend. Being that you are layering a coating on top of another coating by putting on the new dye, even with a dead on dye match, at some angle, some light, some way, you're going to be able to tell if you just do this one little spot that there's some there's a there's something different there it doesn't look like it just flows so what we always recommend again we're going to do the panel so I basically i'm going to dye this seat out to a break in the leather and they call it the painter's trick essentially our eye loses the ability to focus on this one spot and then we see the whole panel as a whole so it really helps everything blend in, you know into the next panel so it looks like it's one full coating as opposed to just a repair area so anyway, so let's get to it. So we're just going to take the dye. I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to dip it in the dye. Let it kind of run down. And I'm just going to start coming in and just wiping the seat down. And you'll see that I'm starting to get some coverage. Again, really light. You know, if you get any that runs over, flip the sponge over. Kind of soak some of it up. I always tell people when you're doing a dye job it's kind of like painting a green wall white when you put that first coat on a lot of times you're still going to be able to see what's underneath of it it's 
still see some of that under color showing through but then as you layer the coating up that's when you're going to start to achieve that full coat and get the full color of the dye so now what I'm going to do just to save myself a little bit of time is I'm actually going to use a, a heat gun on low heat All right, and I'm just going to come in and just lightly massage over the leather allowing the dye to cure down now this is not a, a necessary step as far as using a heat gun a hair dryer works as well I'm just using a heat gun because it's a little less noisy um, but this again this is not a required step you can let the dye air dry but I like to use this because it speeds up the process it allows me to put one coat on I can cure it down I can then come right on in behind it add the second coat and things like that so it doesn't just like I said, it helps speed the process up so it doesn't take it quite as long. And as you start to see the dye dry, like I said, if you see any spots where it's bubbling up, where it's puddling, just take your sponge and just kind of lightly get in, soak some of that up. And once we have it dry, we'll then come in, yep. It's dry, so we'll massage it, kind of rub it in a little bit. We're then going to come in and we're going to do second coat of dye. Now you'll notice with just that first coat, we've really started to make that spot really disappear. So we're going to come in, we're going to layer a little more over top of it. And then we're going to feather this out to the rest of the panel. Just wipe everything down, get a good coat over it. So even as you can see here, even with the second coat, I can still see that wear area. So we're going to have to put a third coat on, that's no problem. I guess that's much better to have two to two to four, even three to five. And either, I mean, I've, there have been cases where I've had to put six coats on where it's just, uh, it's just so worn and you've really got to build it back up. So, important, just put it on light. Well, the back side of this panel again I'm trying to trying to always touch out the whole panel now you can come in if you want and just focus on the repair area um, get a get a little bit of coverage there get some uh, get some some color down and then feather out that's okay as well but you know, it's not a big panel so I'm just going to do it all at one time <laughs> so we're coming in now starting with coat three and we're just coming in we're just going to kind of dab that over a little bit real light remember we're wiping it on we're not wiping it in so that's real important as far as making sure you don't wipe off more dye than you put on so we'll wipe it down we'll get us a little more dye we'll come in we'll get it what a good coat sorry about that didn't mean to bump the camera on you three we'll kind of pat it out a little bit sometimes you'll notice that maybe you know you'll start to see wipe strokes if you do from where you're using the sponge um, just use a dabbing motion so you can just kind of dab some of this dye in just to kind of eliminate some of those wipe strokes that you can see and again we'll come in with our hair dryer or heat gun <laughs> now important thing about a heat gun when you're doing leather repair with it is to understand that yes the heat does help it expands the leather it helps it kind of soak down but it's really more about the air pressure you really don't want to overheat this thing you don't want to have your hair dryer right down on the surface um, the, the coating can crack if you do that um, so again just remember it's not about heat it's more about the air pressure hair dryer works really really well um, because you get high volume air pressure and again you don't have very much heat or not as much heat as a heat gun will produce. So a hair dryer works really well. It's just don't have anybody close by when you're talking to them, or if you're trying to talk to them, because you'll you won't be able to hear each other. Coat should do us just right. 
and we're just going to really make sure we get in get that area feathered out and then for this final coat I'm just going to do this top area here I'll feather out the back end of the seat after the video just so y'all don't have to watch all that so we've got some so we're going to come in just rub that out here got some bubbles no big deal soak them up I'm going to add this out one more time and we're going to dry One other thing that really is a good tip if you do decide to use this process and, and use a hair dryer or a heat gun to speed it up is to never leave it set, never leave the tip of the hair dryer or heat gun setting in one spot. Constantly moving, constantly massaging, uh, just to again not to overheat the coating, just to make sure you just get it dry. That's what you're after. And you'll see it go from wet to dry when you're doing it. Um, just keep a close eye, sorry about that. And the edge is real good. There you have it. Soft, supple. Feels just like this. Except it's got color, baby. Looks brand new. So anyway real easy to use product super simple all in one your base coat for adhesion as well as your top coat for sealing are all mixed into one product so it makes the the dye application one step um so anyway there you have it there you see it just how easy it is less than five minutes we've done a whole panel uh, and taking care of some fresh areas so when next time you come to get in this car you got car care confidence because that's what we have around here at auto leather dye so anyway let me know if we can help you let us know if uh, if you check the website out we don't have your color we offer custom color matching so the hardest part of this whole process is making sure you have the right color we have 1300 of them that we offer so chances are we'll have your shade if not we'll get it we'll make it we won't leave you where you are let me know if i can help you sean from autoleatherdye.com thanks so much for watching